What's up, Brit Squad? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Dominic Rich. I'm back to talk about the UEFA Champions League round of 16 fixtures. Yesterday, we saw Man United getting defeated by PSG two goals to nil and AS Roma defeating FC Porto two goals to one. But today, we saw Tottenham take on Borussia Dortmund and Real Madrid take on Ajax. The game that I saw was a Tottenham versus Borussia Dortmund fixture and that one ended in a resounding 3-0 victory for Tottenham Hotspur. The Lily Whites were on fire today and the other game ended in a 2-1 victory for Real Madrid. Unconvincing victory though, you know, Ajax should be kicking themselves for not at least, you know, picking up a draw in that game. So, let's talk about the Ajax you know, versus Real Madrid fixture first. So, Real Madrid 2, Ajax 1. In that game, we had Karim Benzema opening the scoring in the 60th minute for Real Madrid. But Ajax did score a goal first, which was disallowed. You know, this um, obstruction of the keeper, Thibaut Courtois. You know, Ajax had a good bit of chances to actually score in this game, but they failed to do so. Remember, Courtois coming up with a big save. I saw halftime highlights for that. But I don't really like to talk too much about, you know, the games that I didn't really see. I just like to actually give you a quick analysis. But Hakim Ziyech equalized for Ajax in the 77th minute, 75th minute, and then... Real Madrid went 2-1 up in the 87th minute through Marco Asensio. Ajax did get a brilliant opportunity late in the game. It was like their last big chance to actually equalize. And Kasper Dolberg, I don't know what happened there. He probably got really nervous and he failed to kick the ball past Thibaut Courtois. And Real Madrid held on for a very, very unconvincing 2-1 victory. Right now, Ajax, their second in the Dutch Eredivisie behind PSV. And Real Madrid are currently second in La Liga behind the mighty FC Barcelona. Will Real Madrid go on to win their fourth Champions League in a row despite not having Cristiano Ronaldo in their ranks? He has been missed. You know, he his presence is really, really, really telling in this Real Madrid side. And, you know, Zidane is not the coach anymore, Santiago. Solari is there, so he is a former Champions League winner as well. So he knows how it feels to win the Champions League, and he has been doing a good job with this team. But I must say, the young guns of Ajax, they really put on a good show, and I think they deserve a better result than this 2-1 loss. So they will have to rally when they play the second leg in Madrid, and you know turn around this you know one goal deficit but that two away goals for real madrid might prove to be very very important because i know ajax will come full guns blazing in the second leg but i think ajax they need to find a way to keep these players together it's a club that always sells their best players like every single season but they somehow you know have a really good recruitment system and they bring back in very very good talent real madrid we all know what they're capable of doing they're no you know strangers to the competition no strangers to winning the competition but i don't think that they are favorites to win it this year and they have been shown up by a few smaller teams this season and i don't think you know they're going to win it this year. But they can't prove me wrong. They still have very, very good players in their ranks. And new players coming through like Vinicius Jr. So, all the best to both teams in the second leg. I think Real Madrid should be able to get past Ajax and go into the last eight. But Ajax, you know, they played well. And it's all in their hands to overturn, you know, this 2-1 deficit so on to the match that i actually saw tottenham hotspur versus borussia dortmund tottenham they're currently i think third they're currently third in the english premier league if i'm not mistaken and i think they're behind man city let me double check really really fast because i think they are third right now 
Yes, they are third right now in the Premier League. And that's a great, great achievement because they have not signed a single player for the entire season, last um, summer transfer window and the winter transfer window. Not a single signing. Plus, Harry Kane, their, you know, top striker, is out injured. Deli Ali, very, very, you know, influential attacking midfielder, out injured as well. So, two big players missing from the lineup. And Tottenham was still able to defeat Borussia Dortmund three goals to nil. And this is now four wins in the last four games for Tottenham Hotspur. Awesome, awesome achievement by Maurizio Pochettino and his boys. And it shows how good of a manager Pochettino is. Despite not really winning silverware, but Tottenham, you know, they have shown a lot, a lot of quality and they have shown a lot, a lot of togetherness and strength and, you know, to show that their squad has so much depth. Awesome, awesome achievement. I actually had Dortmund to defeat Tottenham in this match. On the road, despite Tottenham not playing at home because this is not their home stadium, but still, they're in England, you know, familiar territory. I did predict Dortmund to actually win this game based on how they've been playing this season. You know, top of the Bundesliga, five points ahead of, bon um, I almost said Bundesliga, but you, you might as well call them the Bundesliga. Bayern Munich, and I've always been saying that this season that Dortmund, they're only teasing us. They're only teasing us with the Bundesliga. They might not even win the Bundesliga. They might not win the Bundesliga and their form has been kind of scratchy as of late. And the fact that Marco Royce has been injured again, you know, his presence was really, really, you know, his absence was felt. You know, his presence was needed today versus Tottenham if Borussia Dortmund were to do something. Another very influential player, Paco Alcatea. He was not in the team as well, out injured. And the Dortmund 11 just looked a little out of sorts today. They started the game very well, but if you look at this, it just looked out of place. We had Zagadou coming in after being out on a long injury layout. Um, Omer Toprak as well. We had Diallo playing at left back. That's not his regular position. And... It, it, it was just not, it, it just did not look right today at all. It just did not look right. We also had, you know, Thomas Delaney, Witzler in the midfield, Mahmoud, Dahoud. All these three players are very, very defensive-minded players. So you could already tell the mindset. Dortmund went into this team a little bit negative, in my opinion. Mario Götze was absent for most of the game. Hardly heard, you know, his name called throughout the game. Jaden Sancho looked very, very good, you know, pulled out the party tricks, got behind the Tottenham defense a few times. Pulisic had a really, really good chance to score as well. But Dortmund, they weren't able to take their chances. They were a the better team, let's say for the first 30 minutes of the game, but Tottenham began to play themselves into the game. And it was telling early on in the second half when they scored through Han Ming Son, man. You can't be mad at this guy. Every time he scores or do well, you have to be happy for him. You know, no one could hate on the boy, son. Come on, you know. Brilliant, brilliant goal in the 47th minute. But I also said, I said that, you know, Dortmund weren't set up properly. Tottenham having problems of their own. Imagine Jan Vertonghen, who I think is the player of the match. He played at left wing back. He is not a left winger. Left, you know what I'm saying? He played at left wing back with Davinson Sanchez, Aldo Rawal, and Johan Foyt playing, you know, in the center back positions. We had Aurier playing, you know, the opposite side of Vertonghen and Sissoko Winks in the middle along with Christian Eriksen. Lucas, who had an early chance in the game, you know, when he controlled it with his leg and whipped it across the goal. That was Tottenham's best chance in the first half. But... Tottenham just came in their own in the second half. The team just clicked. Everyone played well. And that cross by Vertonghen over to Son. That was a brilliant, brilliant cross. And I, I'm afraid that Zagadou, Zagadou did not, you know, mark Son very, very well there. And 
the Dortmund defenders must be, you know, they, they, we must be critical of them because they were really, really flat-footed. The second goal was scored by Vertonghen. Like, imagine that. And the way Vertonghen got away and got behind the Dortmund defense, come on. It was just, you know, telling how flat-footed the Dortmund defenders were today. Like, Vertonghen. Guys, Vertonghen. You know what I'm saying? How he... It's just amazing, man. It was just an amazing, amazing attacking display today by Tottenham. The third goal was scored by Llorente coming off the bench. You know, Llorente did not really take part early on in the season, but the fact that there's a lot of injuries, you know, he has been a very, very important part of this team. And he scored the third, which was a header, a glancing header from, a, I think it was a Christian Eriksen. Connor and Tottenham, man, a big, big win. Three goals to nil at home. It's pretty much wrapped up going into the second leg. Like Dortmund, they will need a miracle. I, they will definitely need them. They will need to defeat Tottenham by four goals to nil in order to actually overturn this. Three goals to nil will take it to penalties, but extra time to penalties, but I don't think it's going to get that far. You know, Harry Kane and Deli Ali might be back in time for the second leg. So it's fair to say that Tottenham are into the last eight. I think they have made it to the last eight on one occasion, if I could recall from the little research I did. And I think that was against Real Madrid. They, did, they never made it to the semifinals. So off the UEFA Champions League. I'm talking about Champions League era. So if anyone's going to say, you know, yes, they did before. I'm talking about Champions League era. But it was a great, great performance by Tottenham Hotspur. You know, Maurizio Pochettino will be happy that he's able to, you know, do things like this with a very, very limited squad. Very, very limited. Maybe now he will start getting the back end, you know, from Daniel Levy, you know, to bring in maybe bigger players. But I think that Tottenham actually wants to promote from within. You know, you got all this skip and you have, you know, Harry Wings coming through. You have Kyle Walker-Peters coming through. And, you know, a few other youngsters coming through the ranks there. I think that's the way they want to go. And it's not a, a, a bad way of thinking at all. But you still need to bring in some quality players because... You're going to lose players like how you lost Musa Dembele and, you know, Christian Eriksen's been rumored to leave for a very, very long time. And there's been players rumored to leave for a very, very long time as well. So I think Tottenham, it's a great achievement. It's really, really good for them. You know, for Dortmund, it might not be a bad thing if they get knocked out of the Champions League because if they do get knocked out of the Champions League like they did get knocked out of the German Cup, they can now focus all their energies on actually winning the freaking Bundesliga, which they haven't won since 2012 when Jurgen Klopp was there. So we need Bayern Munich to, to be dethroned and Dortmund seems like the only team who can do it. You know, we saw Leipzig threatened a few seasons ago to do it and we need Dortmund, we need Dortmund to actually win this damn Bundesliga. So... Getting knocked out of the Champions League at around a 16 might not be a bad thing at all. They have very, very, you know, talented players. But, you know, injuries have came at the wrong time, I'm afraid. Marco Royce is a, you know, he's a very, very important figure in this team. And with his, you know, absence, I think it really, really hampered Dortmund's chances of making it to the quarterfinals. So, guys, that's my thoughts on those two Round of 16 fixtures. We are now wrapped up with four round of 16 fixtures. Next week, we have the Leon Barcelona playing on Tuesday. I'm going to go for Barcelona to win on the road there. Liverpool versus Bayern Munich. That one is really, really hard to predict. But when you think about it, it would not be a bad thing if Liverpool stays in the Champions League. Because if they are not in the Champions League, it means that the Premier League will be the only competition that they're in. And they, you know, could definitely, you know, pull away from Man City. So, I must say, um, might swing towards Liverpool, you know, getting the better of Bayern Munich. 
across two legs. I did initially say Bayern, but I think Liverpool, you know, the form they have shown recently, they might skip past Bayern Munich there. Atletico Madrid, Juventus. I'm going to go for Juventus with that one. No doubt about that. Atletico Madrid, very good team, but Juventus, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, man. You know, they've been awesome this season, you know, top of the Serie A again. And the Schalke Man City, man. If we don't annihilate Schalke, like, I will be so disappointed in my team. But I think we will get over this Schalke hurdle, which should not be a really big hurdle to get over. So I'm going to go for City to get over, you know, Schalke, even on the road. You know, some valuable away goals there in the first leg, set up the second leg very, very nicely. But guys, that's my thoughts on, you know, the first four Champions League round of 16 fixtures. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Guys, man, question of the day. Which of these bigger teams you think will not make it to the round the last eight, when I say round, which of the bigger teams will not make it to the quarterfinals? Leave your answer in the comment section down below. If you're new around here, consider hitting the subscribe button, smash the thumbs up button, and until next time, peace out, rich squad.